ADA stuff. All the stuff that's coming out of Florida and the ADA for fighting the individual states. And there is some behind the scenes stuff going on in Texas about either revoking it or changing it or doing other stuff. But um, if you contact Dave Kleiman, he knows more about that. Okay, yeah, I just signed the PDF. Right. Well, they take a long time to get them, too. I mean, every time you see so many people here after a really good party last night. So, so props to you all for making it here and also for wandering all the way here across the, the river and, and God only knows where to find this place. We have a couple of announcements. There are several lost items, including a cell phone, a watch, and I'm not sure what else at the registration desk. So if you are missing something or know someone who says, oh my God, where's my whatever, have them go check at registration. Also, remember that, that we have the plenary at the end. There'll be a delay to move things around. Um, Scott has a couple of things to give away, so let me introduce him. If you've been to previous ShmooCons or you know his work, he does absolutely great forensic work on disk drives. He's taught me a lot about how to do disk drives, and I have found myself every year after I go to one of his talks being able to directly use the, the information in it to settle some debate. So this is really one of the things that makes it worth the price of admission. So thank you for coming again. Thank you, John. Can you guys hear me? Everybody hear me back there in the back? You guys good? All right, audio good? Video? Okay, good. All right, so, uh, so at least some of you, I mean, I've been doing speeches, uh, presentations and stuff for four or five years, so it seems to be kind of like a series of events. I keep adding to it as we go. So, uh, so some of this is complementary to some previous stuff, so you can always go back and look at the videos. Uh, pretty much everything that I've done publicly has been published, so it's on YouTube. There's probably at least 60 hours worth of videos and animations and other stuff out there. Um, I teach a, a class. I do some things. So, uh, so basically, this is. So this is basically what I do. Uh, primarily, I am a computer forensics person. I do data recovery. I own two companies. I own a company called MyHardDriveDie.com. This is about as good advertising as you can possibly get. Um, and in addition to that, I do forensics for uh, criminal cases, defense work, and uh, where we physically, in most cases, have damaged drives of some kind. So, uh, you know, bullet holes through drives where they miss the platters, things like that, um, I can typically do something with. And so, as an example, just to kind of give you an idea about what that is, um, this is just kind of a quick uh, a case study of something that I did. This is actually from an FBI case that I worked on. This is a uh, standard hard drive, nothing too special about it. But I opened it up, and this is what I saw. So the FBI couldn't get anything off this for a federal case. And so uh, anybody know what that is right there? This is the voice cool magnet, and that is the head. That is the head from the, I got like some battery problem here. That is the head off of this drive. <laughs> so it flung off. And then this was still uh, operating back and forth, to, you know, plug it in, try to see. So we had some physical damage on the platter itself, uh, you know, as it scratches across with the wire. Because I didn't touch that. That's exactly how it came out of the drive. So um, I was able to repair this. And just so you guys don't think I'm full of crap here, this is uh, the, one of the guys that I worked with. This was the guy's uh, testimonial about my stuff. Um, we did it, like, in two parts. I did the physical repair and then taught him what I needed to do because I had to travel. And then um, for the, like the last three days, he ran what we call a live board swap. So if you've seen any of my previous talks, you'll know what a live board swap is. But I had to use basically four drives to reassemble this one drive to get the data off of it. Uh, and I got 96% of the data back. And uh, so they have uh, great pictures for their criminal case, if that tells you anything. So what this talk is about, basically this is kind of the fallout from uh, I, this class that I teach, uh, I teach, uh, I've had law enforcement, data recovery companies, pretty much uh, somebody from every walk of life has come and taken some classes, and this is kind of like the top ten things that come out of that class that most people didn't realize or know when they came that uh, I could actually do in a talk in 15 minutes without uh, spending three hours trying to show a particular process. 
And I try to include a little bit of each thing from each operating system or some fundamentals so that everybody will be included so somebody can't just go, oh, this is just for Windows or this is just for whatever. Uh, so there should be a little bit of everything for everybody here. So number 10. <clears throat> There's a better way to wipe. Now, this is a constant discussion I have everywhere, so hopefully once the video gets out there, I don't have to keep having this discussion over and over again. But, um, and I know what most of you are thinking. You know, it's like, oh, you know, you, you got special programs out there like DBAN and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but there's basically a, a, a progress with regards to how to wipe a drive. And I know you're thinking, eh, another way. One more on the list, so yawn, whatever. But, uh, or you could say this is yet another way to wipe now. But... <laughs> so, so why do you need another program to, to deal with wiping or trying to make sure that you get your stuff gone? Um, in this particular case, there were some particular things that uh, they were trying to accomplish at the Center for Magnetic Recording Research. So basically, the whole point is, is that most of the wiping methods, anybody wiped a drive? I mean, like you went and got D-band, you sat down and you wiped a drive? Yeah? How many hours for a what size drive? A day, day, two days, right? So, so most of you know the other people who are doing wiping. It's a really slow process, and so they're they're like, oh, do I have a week to just go put this? Otherwise, you like secure the drive in hopes that in the future you can wipe it before you go sell it on eBay or something like that. Which, by the way, is probably a really bad idea. Um, <clears throat> And so there's also a risk to the program not completing or someone not knowing when it's, uh, when it's done, whether or not they've actually completed the wipe without any kind of verification. So there's some people who actually have to, for certain departments, take those drives, box them up, and ship them to somebody for verification before they can release them. Anybody doing, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, some of you got to ship them out, right? So, uh, so now you've got a really expensive process for verification. I'm not saying we'll eliminate that, but still, at least from that, that point of view, uh, there's, there's a number of things that you have to worry about. And then uh, most software, most of you probably don't know this, from DBAN, like if you go get, and I'm not picking on DBAN, it's a great piece of software. It's wonderful that they put it out there and uh, it's free and you can do a number of different things, but it ignores bad blocks. Basically, there's a bad block redirection, so everybody know what bad blocks is? So basically what ends up happening, the drive writes 512 bytes of data to your drive, then the ECC comes back, it doesn't match, so it has a pointer to a new location where it's actually going to put the content, and it's either dynamically or physically created. But at that point in time, it already wrote the 512 bytes. It didn't ra erase that 512 bytes. It left it there. And then it points to a new location where the new data is written. So when you wipe, you're wiping the new location. The old location typically is still sitting there. So, uh, so basically... There's an item that's called Secure Erase. So what is Secure Erase? The, the cool thing here is technically it's not a program. This is where we're getting away from like, okay, fine, I gotta go get a boot disk and I gotta come and slap it in the machine and do something with it. This is where we actually have something now that the request was, let's embed it in our system, on our motherboard, on our drives. Let's do something like that so we don't have to have a special program. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, you know, it runs internally, that we don't have any exterior stuff where we go and download, you know, some Trojan virus or go get something off the net, because mostly that's probably what happens. You go, either you've got a program you reliably used, or you go search the net and you go find one and download one and hope that you're doing it right. And uh, a lot of them don't do it right. So uh, if you've ever been in a forensic case, you already know that. So, uh, so they wanted to come up with this secure ATA delete command. And basically, this has been built into your drives since 2001. It is an agreement between the ATA standard that's on your motherboard and the drive manufacturers to have a command that could be issued that would wipe the drive. And it meets these, uh, the items for sanitation, the uh, DOD 5220 standard. So it basically applies that. There's two different versions of this particular uh, function for the secure erase. And so I've got the link to it down there. Basically, you're going to be looking up uh, Secure Erase, and you'll find some stuff from uh, one of the EDUs, and just follow that, and you'll find a uh, Gordon.